Welcome to yet another week full of AI innovation. And in this week, we're going to be looking at a few things, but they do matter. First up, there's Google Gemini shipping new features that improve their slide creation, and it directly connects to Google Slides. We'll test that. Then Coca-Cola came out with a fully AI-generated app. I want to review that. And then also Canva revamped all of their AI features in a massive overhaul. All that and way more in this week's episode of AI News You Can Use, the show that pulls together all the AI releases, and then we filter for the ones that matter and test them for you. Let's begin. And our journey starts in the Gemini app because I really want to have a closer look at that. I think one of the most powerful things that AI has been unlocking recently is this ability to work within Excel sheets, Word documents, PowerPoint slides, or Google's equivalents that a lot of people are using like Google Docs, Google Slides, or Google Sheets. And we've seen updates like this, right? Recently, we saw Claude ship a bunch of updates that made it so much better at creating spreadsheets, Word documents, and slides. And now Google is following them with an update to their slide creation ability. So we're going to do a head to head battle where we're going to run the same prompt through both tools and just see how it performs in terms of slide creation so that you know what to use when your next presentation is coming up. And you might not be using one of the specialty apps like Gamma that is only built for creating slides, but you just want to do it within one of these tools. I'm just going to go with something silly because this will give it a lot of creative freedom. And you know, I like my cat with hat examples. So create a presentation that explains why everyone needs a cat with a hat. Okay, just run this through Sonnet 4.5, do the same thing inside of Gemini, and let's see how this goes. Okay, so this is generating now. And if you're watching this, chances are you enjoy what we're doing here. And if you want to see more of it, make sure to leave a subscribe. It helps the channel more than you think. And now let's fast forward to the two presentations being done. Okay, so this took a while, but I think that's completely fine if it's creating a presentation. Let's have a look at the results. So Claude created it in a PowerPoint that I'll just open up over here. And then Gemini did it inside of the interface, which is kind of neat. So let's start with Claude, which was the best slide creator amongst the big LLM platforms. Why everyone needs a cat with a hat. Okay. Yeah, it's like visual missing here. This looks pretty social. Okay, this box is larger. There's a graph. Look at that. Studies show remarkable increases in happiness. Instagram likes. Okay, this is pretty good. I like the content. Real world applications. <laughs> it's a style statement. Testimonials. Okay, not bad. Honestly, that's a solid starting point for a presentation. Like add a picture here. Maybe tweak this box and add two more pictures. And that's a great presentation. Now let's have a look at what Google Slides did here. So it actually generated an image of a cat, which is amazing in there. Life is complicated. Your daily routine is missing a crucial hat based element of joy. Okay, all right. So this does images too. And the design is a bit more playful, no? There's a case study. More images. Wow, look at that. Image sources. Okay, so it pulled these from all across the internet. This one is from Reddit. This one is from some AI art page. So it didn't generate them. Interesting. I mean, these are different flavors of pretty good. I don't think either one of these is like ready for prime time. If I had to pick one, Definitely the Google one is the more complete one. And you can just export it to slides in one click and then voila, it's right in here and everything in here is editable. Okay, I have to say, I do really like this. So yeah, there you go. Nice little comparison. Both great options, or you go to a dedicated app like Gamma, as I mentioned, but having it inside of the LLM platform of your choice is just more convenient. And this is the story that spans across all the startups that are built. These big players, they just take the ideas that work the best and integrate it into their ecosystem. And I think having the ability to create presentations, sheets, and Word documents right in here just makes so much sense. Okay, let's move on. Okay, and for the next one, regular views of the show will know that I'm not the biggest fan of these pure AI model releases, especially in the image or video space, because new models come out every week and the differences are usually not significant. When it comes to that space, it's usually not the model, at least not anymore, that makes a difference. And one platform for creators that is nailing this balance between models and tooling is LTX, sponsor of today's video. LTX is an all-in-one creation platform that lets you use AI to help brainstorm, build storyboards, and more. I want to take a minute to actually show you the latest feature they added and that is the new custom voiceovers feature. So I'll start off by going to the timeline interface in a brand new project. And down here, you can see the new voiceover feature. All we need to do is pick one of the voices here. This moment sticks with you. Listen closely. Hey there. Hi. Relax. Yeah, I like this one. You can input your script here and by simply clicking generate, it will appear in the timeline. Now, the key thing here is that this happens within the studio that also generates the storyboard images, turns them into videos, allows you to edit, and it's all in one place. You or your teammates don't need to round trip to various applications to get this done. And before I even manage to say that, we have the clip. Check out today's AI news you can use. Okay, so that's a good base, but if you go here, 
You can say use parameters and now it allows you to really dial it in. And if you don't like the voices here, you can just create your own. We can go for bass voice, turn them into a nature film narrator. And if you use square brackets, you can even add emotions to your script here. Check out today's AI news you can use. Great. And once I like it, I can add it to my timeline and then use other LTX to start from a storyboard or generate images or videos with all kinds of models all in one place. So as you can see, LTX keeps the entire process from idea to final concept super simple, letting creators like me add voiceovers to any video quickly and affordably. And this is just one of many options available in LTX. So if you want to get started today, click the link at the top of the video's description. Thanks again to LTX for sponsoring this video. Now let's look at the next piece of AI news that you can use. So here we have a complete overhaul of Canva. So what they do is once a year, they host a big event with a keynote where they ship all their new apps. And for the past two years, especially last year, they hyper focused on AI. And they're really trying to build this all in one image and like media creation platform that is powered by AI. Here they're competing with Adobe's Firefly platform and their models. And they're actually doing a really good job at it. So let me show you a few things that are new here. There's a lot more to explore. If you want to see everything, I recommend you check out the blog post where they did a really good job of showing you off the various features and what they look like in practice with little videos and GIFs. There's a new video editor and stuff, but what really caught my eye was the following. There's a design AI that you talk to with chat. And I want to look at that because they also promised that this will be coming as an app to both ChatGPT, Claude and Gemini soon. Not yet. For now, we need to check this out in the platform, but all of these capabilities will be available. I'm just going to type in create a poster promoting a YouTube show called AI News You Can Use. I'm going to switch over to this new Canva AI. I'm going to do one more thing, which is apply the brand kit that we have right here. And then it should create an on-brand poster. So you can create this brand kit once, use it within here. And this interface with the depth of its abilities is new. So it can sort of do Photoshop like actions, obviously not as deep, but all of that on autopilot. And then it gives you multiple versions of the thing you need. And as you can see, they're really gunning for this vision of an AI Photoshop. And here it is for variants. So let's say I really like this for fun. Let's just go with this. So I can go in here. You can see I could edit this. And as you might be used to in Canva, it's just really simple. If I want to go ahead, I could just go straight to the Canva editor. And there's also an AI assistant in here. But while trying this, I realized that this one doesn't have the capability of actually editing it. So if you want to keep editing, you got to stay in that original Canva AI that they overhaul. In here, you can ask Canva. But if I tell it something like, hey, make this larger, it's going to just think and tell you how to do that rather than actually doing it. But if I wanted any of the AI functionalities applied to this image, like editing certain elements or expanding it, I could do that right in here. And of course, I could search their library or just generate brand your images in here. And there you go. That's quite simple, no? There's a whole lot more here. They added like 3D features to images where you can like rotate them. Pretty cool. You can restyle things. You can create forms. There's a bunch of new presets. If you're a Canva user, I just recommend you check out this blog post. And if you have a brand, these brand kits that I just showed you are kind of amazing. You put in the color, fonts, everything, and just with one click, you can create a lot of stuff you need really quickly. Not bad. Feels like for people who use Canva, it just became even easier. And there's some neat new features that might just help you in while you work in here. For the next one, it's an update to the viral AI video generation app from OpenAI called Sora. There's actually a bunch of updates, but the big feature they introduced recently is their new character cameos. So up until now, you could train a person's face into the Sora app and then you and others, if you gave them permission, could use it to remix you into all types of situations. I bet you've seen all the wild remixes. That was a whole viral wave when that came out, but now they allow you to do characters. So you could create a character for your dog, or maybe if you want a creative idea, you could go to the zoo and create a character for our one of the local penguins or whatever. Just saying that because I would sort of enjoy doing that. Anyway, the point here is that if you were hesitant to create a cameo of yourself, like, which I think is kind of fair, then this is a fantastic opportunity to actually try the cameo feature and maybe put your dog in there and create funny videos with him. I think that's kind of neat. And let's be real, there's no privacy risk with your dog's face being trained into the app, but there's more. They're actually shipping Sora to more and more countries and platforms that's finally available on Android in the following countries, Canada, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, US and Vietnam. And also they have brand new Sora handles, especially the one on Twitter is actually really funny. I think they hired some sort of Gen Z marketer to run this and I'm here for it. Sora official app, Sora official app, Sora official app. Good stuff, honestly. Let's see what's next. And next up we have something I wanted to make a quick hit, but actually I think it deserves a bit more attention because this is Coca-Cola's brand new Christmas ad. 
which is fully AI generated. We're not gonna watch the full thing here, but this is pretty damn good. And I think for people who wouldn't be watching for an AI generated video here, this is kind of hard to spot. I mean, sure, there's like one shot of Santa here where, well, I think this one looks pretty suspicious. And if you start really nitpicking, you can find those little AI artifacts, but they're so rare. I mean, look, you really have to go into this scene and then freeze frame the hand. Here it looks weird, yeah? Look at that. But like, you have to be really nitpicky. The logos look super good. And I was even wondering, did they track the logos on top of this because they're so good? I mean, clearly, like, if you stop the frame here, you'll see that this logo is good, but these back here, the Coca-Cola logos are completely messed up. If I had to guess, I would say that they track this first logo on it every time because Coca-Cola cannot afford to, the logo to be kind of right. It needs to be exactly right. But with that being said, there's a few shots in here where look at that, like here, it doesn't look super clean. This C follows a weird line. I think it's a combination of logos being tracked on top of it and fully AI generated clips. With that being said, it's just crazy that they could create an ad like this that is fully made by AI. And look, they even say created by real magic AI, whatever that means. Um, yeah, it's real magic AI. I guess the whole point of the ad is that Coca-Cola is real magic. Cheers. No, this is not sponsored. But I thought this ad was exceptional well done. And now we can talk about the controversial aspect of this, which is it's getting a lot of backlash, just like last year's ads did. And I understand the point here in the comments, which is saying that, hey, you could have hired real animators and paid all the people involved in this. And yeah, that is true. I'm sure this cost like one or 2% of what the ad would have cost with a studio of 3D designers, maybe even less, but I thought it was really well done. And it's just a new world. The transition can be tough, sure. But this argument that you should be using horses, although cars exist, yeah, it makes sense from certain angles, but at the end of the day, it's just not gonna happen. It's a new world, we're not going back. And while it might be different, there's an artistry involved in creating this tool. I mean, I know I've never created ad this high quality, and I personally find it rather inspirative to see what's possible with these tools. And I also like this little meerkats. <laughs> Be curious to hear what you think though. And for this week's quick hit segment, there's actually a bunch of stories. So let's go for them quickly, starting with one that is rather big, but I wanted to hold out on this and see what the community kind of says about it because Cursor released Cursor 2 and they also have their own proprietary model for coding. With things like this, I usually find it best to let this sink into the developer community and to see what people actually make of this. As I've mentioned before on the channel, my tool of choice still is Claude Code. It just works exceptionally well for me. But yeah, if you're a Cursor user, they have a brand new version and a new model. Curious to see how that lands with the people. This one is really cool. If you're into chess, they basically created an AI coach that critiques your game. Daniel from the team tested it. And they basically give you different coaches like Magnus Carlsen, Gotham Chess on YouTube, Hikaru, the Bota sisters, and they comment on your game. I think AI coaches are such a smart way to use the technology and I love to see it and it seems to work really well on chess. So if you're into that, go try this out on chess.com. This one is sort of an integration between two different tools that Google has. They're integrating Stitch with Jules. Jules is their AI coder and Stitch is their front end design app. And it just makes sense that they align these two and they connect now. Not sure I'm not really a user of these applications, although I remember testing Stitch and it was exceptionally good. That's like Google's go-to front end builder. If you need that, make sure to check out this integration. And then we have Comfy Cloud, which is very simple. It's Comfy UI, the tool that is there to build all the more advanced image and video generation workflows and so much more actually. But it can have quite the learning curve when you're getting into it. Now it's available in the cloud, meaning you don't need to actually install it locally, which I think is a big hurdle for many people. You can just run it in the cloud, including the GPUs, latest models, all that. And then lastly, we have some new stories. One of them is the AI artist that we talked about a few weeks back, Zainia Monet. Eugenia Monet, however that is pronounced, actually appeared on Billboard's charts with the AI music. If you're not familiar, she's an AI-generated artist that makes only AI-generated music. And she got a record deal. Now she's on the charts. Yep wild world we live in. And then this one just has the best title of the year. I mean, Google wants to run AI data centers in space powered by the sun. We want to put up orbiting satellites where solar panels can generate power at eight times the efficiency all around the clock. I don't know, that title was just too good. Wanted to include it here, thought you would care too. More info on that in the description below. And that's pretty much everything we have for this week. It's a bit of a shorter episode. I don't want to needlessly bloat these videos just to make them longer. Again, we just covered the stories that we figured that matter. And yeah, with that being said, my name is Igor Pogani, and I hope you have a wonderful day.